It took me many years and a house move to finally find a ceiling fan a speed control. So today I'll take you through what I found and a quick uh, tutorial on setting it up. Let's get started. All right, so let me show you what I've got here. This is a, a ceiling fan dimmer and it's made by a company called Martin Jerry. And um, there you go. It has uh, four speed controls on it or four, four positions for speed control. And they're all touch controls. So you just kind of touch them and they do what they're supposed to. Uh, you can kind of see if I over my hand over that shadow, you can see the little red light blinking. That's because it's not configured. So we're gonna go over that here in just a second. All of this stuff, by the way, is gonna be on my blog. So you can just take a look at the blog and follow along with it. Here's the, a picture, a better picture of the device. You can see these four little controls right here. And then there's the on off button here. They're all touch sensitive. So there's no tactile feeling to this. You do hear a relay click when you push these buttons. So you know something actually happened. Um, this particular model is pre-flashed. Uh, and here's the website, by the way, this model is pre-flashed with Tasmoda and that's why I like it. It has the, um, ability to be paired and set up on your Wi-Fi directly from a web page. So basically what you do is you power it up and then we'll go to this uh, 192.168.4.1. So I'm gonna connect on my phone here to the Tasmoda IP address here. And it's gonna to try to connect and tell me I have no internet, which is fine. I don't care about that as long as it connects to it. And I want to connect only this time, go through all the rigmarole there. Now you should be able to open a browser and you should be able to go to 192.168.4.1 and enter that there. And it should bring up the Tasmoda screen. And the first thing you want to do is connect to a 2.4 gigahertz network. So I'm going to connect to my network uh, and I will save it. So I'm just going to click on one of these guys here. We'll put in the password. Now it's going to try to connect the device to the network. And once it does that, it will come back and give you an IP address of the device itself. And then we can continue from there. And there's my new IP address, 172.3.1.10.110. All right, so now we can continue from here and we can go ahead and start setting things up. Now there's a few configuration options that you're going to have to go through in order for this to work. All right, let me take a moment and just talk about where I'm getting the rest of this information for, uh, from. Digiblur uh, did a video on this, and so he has a nice blog post. And so what I'm doing is taking some of the configuration options that he and some of his community have figured out for this switch, because there's a couple things that happen now. You can turn the switch on and off via Home Assistant by adding a button and just referencing the entity that shows up in Home Assistant. Um, you need to set up some auto discovery stuff first for it to actually get over there. So we'll do that in a second. In addition, with the auto discovery, at least in the past, the packet for auto discovery was so big that it didn't send the speed control presets. And what I mean by preset is low, high, uh, super low, super, super crawl speed, whatever you call your presets. It didn't send those over. So now you, you actually have to um, create uh, some YAML. We'll do that here in a second. All right, so I'll actually go over to the website now and I'll show you what we're talking about. This is again on my blog. Also, Digiblur has this on his blog, uh, some of this. Um, of course, my own little take right here. So what you wanna do is you want to um, copy this. This is rule three from here. And I'm in the editing uh, mode for my blog, so you won't see it exactly like this, but you'll see it on the blog and be able to copy it. Just copy all of this information starting at rule three all the way to the end on. And you're going to go over here, you're going to go to the console and you're going to paste it in. So control V and hit enter. Now rule three is not always turned on. So you need to make sure that you come down here and you turn on rule three by typing rule three space one and, and enter that in the console as well. So rule three, rule three space one. Let me make sure I did that right. Uh, it's not capitalized. I don't know if it matters and hit enter on there as well. And then that turns rule three on. You can see it right here. Rule three is now on. And now if you go over to Home Assistant and you look at the developer tools, look for states. If we did everything right, you should actually see an entity in here called 
game room fan. And you'll see actually that you do. Let me just click this uh, and we'll go to this button right here. Whoops. We'll click on, where is it at? This right here? No. Related device info. There we go. All right. So we have the two, uh, the uh, Tasmoda firmware version and all of this other information. Last restart uh, and all these things right here. The game room fan is the button that you would use to turn it on and off. So all it's doing right now is turning the switch on and off. You don't really have any ability to do anything else with it. That's because the presets and stuff didn't come over. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back over and we're gonna look at this right here to this next section. Uh, and we're gonna see, and we just talked about all this. We're gonna put some stuff in our configuration.yaml file. Now in the, the configuration.yaml file, it, it really depends on how you have this uh, hierarchy set up. I have a file that's actually called MQTT. That's where I put all of my MQTT uh, entries. And so the way it works is in my configuration.yaml file, I have MQTT that references this. So anything I start in this file actually starts at the next level down. So you would have MQTT uh, colon, something like this, and then you would come over two spaces and put fan and then all this, all this other stuff that's in here. Um, because I'm already running um, this top level referenced in the main configuration.yaml file, all I need to do is start here with fan and put everything else in it. Now you don't want to duplicate the fan section. You just want to put in the next fan entry. So what I'm going to do is take all of this information right here, again, copy and pasting it. And I'm again in edit mode in my blog. You won't see it this way necessarily, but you'll be able to pull it out and copy it. And then we'll put it in right here. And this is gonna be the game room fan. Now, when I looked at the uh, topic, you can look at the topic in a couple of places. I can look at it here. This is a uh, fan underscore game room. That's what the MQTT topic is. Don't let that get confused with the name that you're giving this right here. If you want to keep everything the same, you could put fan game room and just keep, kind of keep it the same. The other way you can see this is to go into the console on this and look at what the topic is. And it says state or stat fan game room. So this fan underscore game underscore room is what you want to put in your code here. So everything under this is fan game room. So we'll just go through and change all of these. You can, if you're a power user of, of uh, Visual Studio Code or something, you can go through and mass change all of this. But um, I already have it up here, so it's a little more difficult. So let's change all this stuff. All right, so you can see that I've changed everything I said, um, fan living room to fan game room in all of these lines here. So now in order for this to be picked up, you have to restart or quick reload Home Assistant. So let's do that now. Let's go over here to Home Assistant and I'll go back to Settings. And you can just come over here to System or somewhere in here and click on the power button. You can do a quick reload and see if that works for you. Typically that will reload your MQTT entities as well as everything else. Uh, if that doesn't work, then go ahead and do a full reload. Give it about 10, 20 seconds for it to actually do the full reload before you start trying to mess around with stuff. Okay, let's uh, go over now to developer tools and take a look and see if that new entity that we just created in YAML has shown up. And so let me look for game room fan. So you notice I have switch fan control two and I have fan game room fan. This is the one that has the speed control on it. So clicking on that, you'll notice now that I have the presets uh, for all of the different fan positions that or fan speeds that I have set in the YAML that we just pasted into the YAML configuration or configuration YAML, including an on off button. So you can turn it on. It will go back to the previous state it was in, or you can just, um, actually turn it on from one of these states. So I'll just turn it on to low and now it's on. I hear it clicking over here on the side. So it's doing what it's supposed to. Um, one of the things I noticed here, and I don't quite understand what is, what it's doing here, but you'll see, I have fan control too. If I look at my living room fan, spelling it properly, that is, 
you'll see fan control. So I have fan control and fan control two. If I go over to the actual settings here and I look at, let me show you where I'm at. I'm under configure other. And I gave it a device name of game room fan and a friendly name of fan control or a game room fan. It still says fan control. For whatever reason, it's sending over. It's not updating this. And so every time I and add a new controller, a new fan control, it just increments that number. So if I add a third fan control, it will then call it fan control underscore three. That makes it hard for understanding which one of the fans it is, except when you look at developer tools, even though it says switch fan control, it tells you which one it is under the friendly name. I don't know why it's not saving that other, uh, that other name, but I can tell what it is actually by looking at it. So switch fan control two is game room fan, friendly name, game room fan. So it's okay. It, it doesn't break anything. The thing I'm most interested in is this anyway, because this has all of the speed controls. Now you can turn this on and off directly with just an on off button. So if you ever just needed an on off switch, your fan control that it got from auto discovery is just the fan control switch. This one, is better because it has all the business in it. And you can even get histories and stuff here. So uh, on off, you can click this here. Now just keep in mind that percentages are based on splitting that speed into 25% increments. So it's not a true set the speed at a certain percentage type of fan. It is just because I have four positions, 25, 50, 75, and 100, yeah whatever, wherever that is, um, that will tell me that I'm at 50% on, on low, which is kind of a misnomer. Medium is 75% and high is 100% or as fast as it will go. Anyway, so that's the setup there. It's not super easy. It's not just plug and play, but it's not super hard either. Um, I'll recap the, the steps again, and you can go over those in the blog at the end. A couple of things to remember, make sure you save your YAML. Uh, off the video, you just you didn't see this, but I spent 10 minutes trying to figure out why this didn't show up. It's because I never saved the YAML after I added it to my configuration. So I never saw it. Um, the other things to remember, let me just go through here the blog and just double check here. Um, there is one more section that I did not cover that's in DigiBlur's blog. And it basically talks about the fan when you push the buttons on the front of the fan control. If you look at this right here. If I turn the fan off, it's probably pretty hard to see. Let me just block out my lights for a second here. You can see that light there. You can see the little green lights on there. If I turn the fan off and I hit one of these buttons up here, uh, one of these, you know, on a, a speed control buttons, uh, if I can do that while I'm holding it, it will not only set the speed control, but it will also turn the fan on. So if you, there's a setting to either Turn it on with these buttons as well as the on off button or not. And I, I think it defaults to just coming on with these buttons. So you don't actually have to turn the fan on when you walk up to it. You can just hit a speed button here, one of these speed buttons, and it will, it will automatically turn the fan on and set the speed. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. Um, as a setting, you can go in there and set that if you want to, but most people probably just want to hit the fan speed button and have the fan come on. All right, so anything else I want to cover in the blog here? Um, yeah, let me just show you real quick here. I have a couple of things I've set up already on here. One of them is the fan speed. So there's a couple of different fan speed settings or fan speed uh, dashboard things. And here's one for the fan that I've installed already. You can hit the speed and you'll, uh, you'll be able to see which speed you're on here. Now this one has three, low, medium, and high. The fan control speeds we set were turtle, which is super slow, low, medium, and high. So this is actually missing one. This one here is, is a mushroom card button. A couple of things happen on this one. First of all, you can animate it like you can see here. And then you click on it. You, if you set it to, uh, to more info, then when you click on it, uh, when you set the default action to more info on the mushroom card for this one, it'll bring this up and you can, you can choose things here. Uh, you can also set it to long press and it will turn it on or off. Well, if you have it set that way, but you can set these different things to, uh, if you want to do a long press, it will do the same thing. 
One thing to note too is that when I change the speeds on here, ignore that video. When I change the speeds on here, they don't always show up um, corresponding to what they're doing. I don't know why, but sometimes I don't see the speed update on this card. This is an HACS installed card. I don't know how long it's been maintained or how well it's been maintained. Um, so just keep that in mind. I like this mushroom card because I can just come over here, pick a speed I want it to be on and be done with it. Now you do see it did up here. It's really just your preference, whichever way you want to go with those cards. But there are, are cards you can use with those fans. Um, oh, one other thing to, to note here too is uh, this right here. I think mentally, I think this is happening. If I click on high, it actually speeds that up. And if I put it on low, it actually slows us down. So if you could figure out the various speeds that are going on, the mushroom card will actually indicate the speed at which your fan is running. If you can tell the difference. I don't know how well in the video that even comes out, but on high, um, it, to me, it seems to go faster, but definitely on low, it seems to slow down a little bit. So you can kind of get an indication of how fast your fan is running just by looking at the card. Okay. So that's it. Now you go install it in the wall and make it work. If you haven't already done that, once you get it all programmed, I highly recommend that you program it before you put it on the wall. If you, if you are able to set up a little jig or a little test bench for that, just to make sure it works and that you can play with it uh, right here everywhere and make sure it all works right. Uh, so I don't know if you hear the construction outside, but they're driving a tractor around out there. And that's one of my cameras that picked that up. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any questions on Discord as well. Uh, if you're a channel member, thank you so much for supporting what I do. I really appreciate those of you who have watched to the end. If you're not a subscriber, that part is right there. Push it. Helps everything uh, grow and makes the channel work better and, and uh, all that stuff that happens when you do that. I think that's it. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video.